Hello, mother factors, Danes, ducks, and Mersons alike. Look at this crazy, freaking awesome movie. Holy f. <laughs> then look at this wooden duck. They're made by the same company. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Crazy cool, more like. Look at him, he's wearing sunglasses. But which Lego face is most common? Why would Mr. Hillary Fisher Page be pissed at Mr. Old Kirk Christensen? Do you think at some point I'll stop my obsession with bees? Sam is starting to get a bit annoyed at me about it. Two out of these three questions are going to be answered. So prepare your fingers for some building, prepare your brain power for some arbitrary instructions that I can never seem to understand. Why can I never figure out how to make the blooming figures? It's not like it's hard, I just want to make a Death Star! Anyway, this is 101 Facts About Lego. Number 1. Lego is an abbreviation of the two Danish words leggot, meaning play well. Number 2. The company was founded in 1932 by Ole Kirk Christensen and passed it on to his son, Godfrey Kirk Christensen, who then passed it on to his son, Keld Kirk Christensen, and his son, Thomas Kirk Christensen, is part of the board. Wow, that was hard to say once. Try saying that seven times fast. Number three. The Lego brick has been named Toy of the Century twice, once by Fortune magazine and once by the British Association of Toy Retailers. Number four. The brick has undergone lots of development in its life, and its most familiar form, the, the brick we have today, was presented in 1958. With its interlocking tubes, it offers unlimited building possibilities. Number five. Speaking of unlimited building possibilities, and to a greater extent, tires, did you know that LEGO is the world's largest manufacturer of tires? Apparently, those little rubber dealies that they make add up. Eat your heart out, Michelin. Number six. LEGO has a hell of a lot of pieces in the sets, most of which I always seem to lose when making them. I don't know where they end up, but I always hear Clive clattering when he's walking by. Anyway, did you know that there is a Taj Mahal set which has nearly six thousand pieces in it. I can't even count to six thousand. How does that even work? Number seven. Lego faces is a funny thing, because even though the majority of the expressions are happy, being 324 happy expressions at the time of recording, the next expression down is that of anger, it being 192. Number eight. But Lego isn't just them bricks, which I'm sure you know. It's got seven parks spread about the globe, with at least another four in the mix, a series of video games, and now thanks to that movie deal with Warner Brothers, it has its own cinematic universe. Number 9. Old Kirk Christensen was a master carpenter and established his company in the village of Billund in Denmark. Number 10. In 1934, the firm only had around seven members of staff, which is super tiny. Humble beginnings, as it were. Number 11. In 1935, the company released the Lego Duck, a handmade wooden duck on wheels that could be pulled by a string. It was a single piece that could not be taken apart to be put back together again, as opposed to the modern Lego that we are used to today. Number 12. The Duck was the first toy that Lego released, and it quickly soared to popularity among children. However, only 100 were made, and the little fluffy but not fluffy because it's wooden product is no longer in production. They can be found in antique stores and shows, apparently. Number 13. Gottfried Kirk Christensen, Ol's third son, started working at the factory at the age of 12 and began making models at the age of 17. He also took his dad's motto, only the best is good enough, and hung it on the workshop wall. It was in Danish, and I'm not even going to pretend that I can read that. Number 14. In 1942, a fire broke out in the factory, which resulted in the loss of many toys and sketches, but the company quickly picked itself up and production quickly resumed. Number 15. The company pulled the big gun out. In 1946, Lego brought a plastic injection molding machine for the toys. The machine cost 30,000 Danish krona, which is around 4,000 US dollars with today's exchange rates. Number 16. The LEGO Group then released the board game Monopoly. No, not that one. The game was based on, slash taught, children about road slash traffic safety and must have sold very well considering that it took LEGO 62 years to release any more LEGO themed board games. Number 17. Ol was highly inspired by Kitty Craft's self-locking building brick toy set designed by Mr. Hillary Fisher Page. Number 18. 
allegedly all stole the idea from Page and manufactured and branded his own automatic binding bricks with his new plastic machine. All was never sued for stealing the patent because Page had died before he could find out. Number 19 by the end of the 40s, the company produced 200 different plastic and wooden toys, including the successful brick. Each were then exclusively sold in Denmark. Number 20 On his 30th birthday in 1950, Gottfried became junior vice president of the company. Number 21 In 1952, the bricks were officially called Lego Merston, which is Danish for Lego bricks, the first base plates and Lego sets being created as well. Number 22. Funnily enough, the packaging for the Lego Merson boxes looked virtually identical to the UK Kiddiecraft box sets that existed around the same time. They were, however, only patented in the UK, France, and Switzerland. Number 23. In 1954, the door and window pieces were introduced to the range, so you were able to make houses. I can have a little me, and I can have a little Jennifer Lawrence, but then I can't have Jennifer Lawrence, because Sam's Jennifer Lawrence. It sounds Jennifer Lawrence. Number 24. Also in the same year, Lego was officially registered as a word in Denmark. Number 25. The 50s also brought many new, and now classic, pieces to the world of Lego, such as the beam bricks, trees, sloping roof bricks, and letter bricks. Number 26. In 1955, Lego Merced was rebranded as Lego System I Leg, which is Lego System of Play in Danish. Number 27 When Gottfried showed off the new and improved toy at a toy fair in Nuremberg, Germany, it got negative reactions. Don't worry, Gottfried, they don't know anything. Keep your chin up. Number 28 And clearly he did keep his chin up, because a year later, LEGO established a foreign sales company in Hohenwestead, Germany. Number 29 By the end of the year, LEGO was selling to companies such as Norway, Germany, Switzerland, and the UK. Number 30. In 1958, Gottfried officially took over the company after the passing of his father, Ol. Number 31. So other than the loss of Ol, everything in Lego was going smoothly. But life, being the cruel and heartless f that it is, caused a fire to spread at the warehouse, destroying the wooden toys within it. At this, the wooden toys were completely discontinued, and the company focused more on the infamous plastic building bricks. Number 32. The 60s brought a wide range of products for the company. Motorized truck sets, the jumbo bricks, which were actually produced by Samsonite in the US, battery-driven trains, the Lego wheel, modern cars for the wheels to go on, like so much. Number 33. In 1961, Lego began to sell in the US and Canada through a license agreement with Samsonite Corporation in order for them to create Lego products. We guys, number 34. The company grew bigger throughout the year, the staff in Villain growing to 450, and countries like Singapore, Spain, Hong Kong, Australia, Japan, and Peru began to import the toys. Number 35 In 1963, Gottfried Kurt Christensen presented the company to the 10 product characteristics. Unlimited play potential, for girls and for boys, fun for every age, year-round play, healthy, quiet play, long hours of play, development, imagination, creativity, the more LEGO, the greater the value, extra sets available, and quality in every detail. Number 36. You want to freak out of London buses for a bit? The big, the red, and they go fast sometimes, but not all the time because congestion is a real big problem in London, guys. You don't understand. Look how bad it is. But we're not talking about real buses because this is 101 facts about LEGO, not 101 facts about London buses. Anyway, in 1966, they released a LEGO version of the London bus. Look how cute it is! Number 37. Don't get too used to the quaint little bus, because they remade it in 1973, then re-released it in 1975 for some reason. They remade the bus a few more times, once in 2011 for the opening of the LEGO store in Westfield Shopping Centre in London, and once again in 2016 with the sign, Now's the time to visit, because it definitely is a time to visit London, please. We need the choice trade, please. Number 38. On the 7th of June 1968, the first Legoland opened its door to the public in the town of Billund, the hometown of Old Kirk Christensen and the first Lego factory. It attracted 625,000 visitors in its first season. 5% of these were from the opening day. Number 39 
The idea for the park came from Gottfried and was originally a measly 14 acres when first opened. Today, the park has grown to nearly thrice its original size at 45 acres and also has, alongside rides and entertainment, hotels in the ground. Number 40. The park was an instant success and its success is still as prevalent as ever. In 2011, 1.9 million guests visited the park, and since its opening, more than 50 million guests have visited overall. And to put that in perspective, that's like all of England. Number 41. It was so successful that Legolands have opened up all around the world. Windsor in 1996, California in 1999, Gunsberg, Germany in 2002, Florida in 2011, Malaysia in 2012, and Dubai in 2016. The Meaning of Life In 1969, giggity, the Duplo series for under fires was launched internationally after product testing in Sweden. The bricks were 18 times larger than a regular system brick. Number 43 In October of 1969, Gottfried and his daughter Han were driving home from a movie, but their car skidded off the road and hit a tree. The accident killed Han and severely injured Gottfried. This shook him so much that he seriously considered selling the company. He didn't, though, and the Christensen family recovered from the incident. Number 44 The 1970s was a huge decade for LEGO! Starting off the decade with a bang, the factory and villain nearly reaching the big 1K with its employees. Number 45 in 1972, LEGO introduced an educational range of LEGO toys, designed with the intent to be used in nurseries and schools, encouraging group play. Number 46 Legoland Zerkstorf was opened in 1973, and boy are we going to have a fun time in our friendly little Germany Legoland! Hey, book some tickets for Zerkstorf! We're going to Legoland! Number 47 in 1974, the Legoland in Billen made this enormous beauty using 1.5 million bricks. Which, um, is cool. I guess you always need your own set of founding fathers if you're Danish. Mmm, number 48. In the same year, the Billen Legoland welcomed its 5 millionth visitor. I can only imagine the pure horror of the individual as they entered through the colourful Lego-made gates and an elation was made of them. How wonderfully terrifying. Number 49. Minifigures also started being released. They didn't look like that, however. They look like this. They were released originally as a part of the Lego Duplo range and couldn't move their arms or legs, their heads being the only movable piece. Whoa! We're halfway there! In 1969, mankind took their first steps on the big circular pie we sometimes call Luna. Well, instead of making Lego for that, they instead made a Lego moon landing set in 1975 when the Apollo program closed. Maybe there's a correlation there. Maybe LEGO was responsible for the ending of the Apollo program. Although conspiracies, get out of this! Robin! Number 51. North America welcomed the moon landing set the year after because reasons. Number 52. Duplo became an independent unit from the main LEGO theme, releasing five sets that consisted solely of Duplo bricks. Number 53. The year after welcomed the closing of LEGO Sexdorf. Wait a second. Clive, cancel the flight. Yeah, it's closed. Yeah, for like four years now. I know, I'm shocked too. Number 54. Keld Kurt Christensen, Godfrey's son, joined the management team in 1977. Three generations of the Christensen family part of the LEGO brand. How wonderful. Number 55. If you look carefully, you can also find that Keld was a model for the product's packaging and marketing materials. Number 56. Duplo renamed themselves this year as well into Preschool, releasing a whole new set of toys, including archers and their own set of figures. They didn't move much though, the figures that is. Number 57. However, in 1979, the preschool theme changed back to Duplo and was given the rabbit logo that we know and love today. The preschool range did come back for a short time in the 80s, however, but only as a subcategory. Number 58. As well as the Duplo range for younger children being reintroduced, the expert range was made. These toys were designed for children aged 9 and up and worked by using axles and gears, parts that weren't often seen in LEGO at that point. Number 59. 
In 1978, minifigures were re-released, but this time in the full LEGO range. The little LEGO figure was a policeman, and it took on the traditional shape that we know and love today. So thank the model designer, Jens Nygaard Knudsen, for that. Number 60. The first LEGO Roadshow opened its gates in Dayton, Ohio, 4,133 miles from Finland. Bit of an old place to have it. Number 61. In 1979, our good old pal Gottfried was appointed a Knight of the Order of the Danbrog. What's that I hear you ask? Well, it's essentially the Danish version of the Knights of the Garter. What's that I hear you ask? Well, it's like a knighthood except more exclusive. Go look it up in another tab, it's super interesting, but please come back, please. Number 62. Kel took over after his father, but instead of becoming the managing director, he anointed himself as CEO. Lucky devil, I want to be CEO. <laughs> I have anointed myself CEO of this voiceover booth. Number 63. In 1980, LEGO released that 70% of Western European families with children under 14 had LEGO in their home, which I think is pretty neat. Nintendo 64. Remember the LEGO Roadshow in Ohio? Well, it was introduced to Denmark, except it got called the LEGO World Show instead. Kinda makes sense it taking place there though, with Denmark being the birthplace of LEGO and all. Number 65. 1982 welcomed the Golden Jubilee of Lego. 50 years had passed and all the employees in Billund celebrated. Number 66. And for the Golden Celebration, the book 50 Years of Play was released, which I can guarantee is a better read than 50 Shades of Grey. Number 67. Duplo updated its minifigures, giving them movable arms and legs. Also some differing skin tones and facial expressions. Also some differing skin tones and facial expressions. And they're not scary. Number 68. Okay, so back to 1983. McDonald's, that old enormous conglomerate that has been known to lead to obesity, diabetes, I mean happiness, happiness and joy. In this year, they released a co-promotion with Lego to create two unique five-piece toys. A duck, a classic in my opinion, and a sailor in a boat with no sides. I wonder if it takes on much water. Number 69. Oh. Sex fact because 69. Remember the LEGO Universe MMO? Remember how it didn't last very long at all? Well, that was because they wanted to develop a penis detection software so that they could erase the penises that players built in the game. But it turned out to be too expensive to monitor all them cocks that went around. Although that sounds like a normal Friday night to me, why is that so difficult? So they closed the game. And that, as they say, is that. Number 70. By the way, McDonald's is the leading manufacturer of toys. It's not really related, but thought you might want to know. Number 71. Anyway, back to 1984. Remember the Expert Builder series? Well, they renamed it to Technic. You may recognize that name a little more, especially since it's the longest lasting theme in the history of LEGO. Number 72. In 1985, LEGO boasted 5,000 employees around the globe, 3,000 of them being in the Billund branch. Wow, that's a lot of people. That's like 10,000 nostrils. I wonder how many of them pick their nose. Number 73. Light and sound sets were introduced this year too. Look at that police van. It's light. It's all shiny, like an actual police van. Not just grand. Number 74. The next year, LEGO Technic introduced their own minifigures. This was only short-lived though, and I guess that's good because it's kind of creepy. Number 75. On the 16th of April, 1986, Queen Margaret of Denmark's birthday, the LEGO group was granted the title Purveyor to Her Majesty the Queen. She must love LEGO then. Number 76. Godfred resigned from the LEGO company for good, which is sad, but he had a good run. Number 77. The first LEGO World Cup building championships began in the same year. The best of the best LEGO builders came and tested their skill. 38 children from 17 countries took place in the championships. Number 78. In 1989, the LEGO Educational Department gets its own name, and about time too! It got called LEGO Dacta, which derives from the Greek word didactic, meaning intending to teach, particularly when having moral instruction as an ulterior motive. Thank you, Google. Number 79. Funnily enough, until this grand old year of 89, minifigures' heads only had a simple facial expression of two black dots for eyes and a black curved smile. That was until the pirate set came along. 
Not only were they produced with the R expressions, they also came with wooden legs and hooks for hands, a first to come away from the traditional hands and legs. Number 80! Also in this grand old year, Ole got his good old self inducted into the Toy Industry Hall of Fame for being the founder of LEGO! Yeah, I don't know why it took them so long either. Number 81! And then them 90s. Only 90s kids remember the 90s. Fortunately, I'm a 90s kid, so we can talk about LEGO in the 90s. In 1990, the LEGO group gets themselves in the top 10 largest manufacturers of toys in the world, and the only one out of the 10 in Europe. Number 82. In the same year, Legoland Billund also gets the rad achievement of getting 1 million visitors in a single year. Go them. Number 83. In 1992, the best year ever, LEGO set two world records, and surprisingly, with LEGO products. A castle was built with 400,000 bricks, and the building of it was broadcast on Swedish television. And a LEGO railway was built, being 545 meters in length. That's 1,788.06 feet for you imperial measurers. Number 84. Remember the Order of Dambrog? Well, Kel gets appointed as a Knight of the Order. He gets to be alongside his lovely old papa. Number 85. In July of 1995, Godfred passed away at the ripe old age of 74. Number 86. From 1995 to 96, Danish composer Frederick Magel was commissioned by the LEGO Group to compose a symphonic LEGO Fantasia. It premiered a year later at a concert in the St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle by the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Number 87. In 1998, the performers recorded the performance, being released to compact disc by the LEGO Group. Number 88. But back in 96, LEGO Billund reaches 25 million visitors since its opening, which is pretty neat, whatever. Number 89. With the release of a Western theme, minifigures with racial characteristics were introduced. These were titled Indians, but what they meant was Native Americans. The set included chiefs, medicine men, teepees, and other such paraphernalia. Number 90. However, it wasn't until 2003 when minifigures with natural skin tones were introduced as part of a basketball set, where minifigures represented real people like Shaquille O'Neal. Number 91. Oh wait, let's go back to 1996. Lego.com got officially opened. Doesn't it look great? Doesn't it just look really great? Look at it. Oh, I bet it's so user friendly. Number 92. A 700 meter square Lego Imagination Center was opened in the Disney Village in Orlando, Florida. So go Lego, they're getting their foot into Disney. Number 93. In 1998, Lego introduced their brand statement, just imagine, into the Lego universe. Number 94. Ironically, however, Lego were actually facing a deficit for the first time ever. It resulted in a whopping loss of 1.4 billion Danish kroner which at the time was like $220 million. I bet the cat stole it. Number 95. But they still released the raddest products of them all, Lego Mindstorm, which was a set that combined traditional Lego bricks and the Lego Technic bricks. The set was controlled by a master brick, of which various motors and sensors could be attached to it. This thing you're seeing on screen is what someone has created using the Mindstorm set. It is two Mindstorm NXT 2.0 microcomputers connecting via Bluetooth utilizing four servo motors, two linear actuators, two ultrasonic sensors, two touch sensors, and two color sensors to accomplish its task. I think the only word I can use to describe this whole thing is... <laughs> Number 96. As well as the Legoland, the first Lego-only store opens in Dartford, London, the first of many to come. Oh hey, flagship store in London. You should come, because it's a tourist trade. Number 97. As of 2003, LEGO had produced 4 billion minifigures. There were at least 3,655 different minifigures produced between 1975 and 2010, and the number of new minifigures per year is increasing rapidly. In 2010, more than 300 new minifigures were introduced. Number 98. Also in 2003, Kel appoints Jorgen Vignustov as the new CEO of the company, being the first CEO to not be part of the Christensen family. Number 99! In 2010, the world's largest Lego mosaic is assembled in the grand old city of Kingsroy, I mean London! 
It measures 15.3 by 6.4 meters and has 384,000 bricks and 1,500 building plates in it. Number 100! Everything is awesome! This song made its debut when the LEGO Movie came to cinemas in 2014. It grossed a whopping $257.8 million, which I think is pretty rad. Number 101! LEGO has been a factor in everyone's lives, which makes sense because there have been more than 400 billion LEGO bricks produced since 1958, which means there are about 62 LEGO bricks per person in the Earth's population. Yeah, not just a pretty face. I've got the maths knowledge as well. Wait, Clive, don't put that on the screen. <laughs> and then she just put her clothes on and went home. Sorry, you interrupted us there during our Q&A. <laughs> that was 101 Facts About Lego. Now, if you enjoyed that, why not click subscribe and you'll get lots and lots more videos like this. Also, be sure to tune in for our Q&A special, where my friend Libby and I will be going through some of your cues. Yay! Today. Woo! Now then, watch this other video that's about to appear on screen. Ready? It's going to be really good. Click it. Just point up. Oh, point, point. There we go. I didn't see you pointing. Also subscribe too.